What's going on? Top of the Monday morning. It's your boy Chris. You're watching Fish for Thought, and welcome back to another Fish Tank review. The craziest pet store beta section. Let me tell you, they are not playing around anymore. Saw these in a fish shop. What is incredibly amazing here is that every single one of these small little beta fish tanks, they are skate with some sort of vision. And you do not see this every day. Not only that, these tanks look much bigger than your average beta fish rack or jar that they usually are put in before selling to customers. So that is also a very incredible thing. That is not something you see every day. From what I can tell, this is either 2.5 gallons to maybe like 5 gallons. The dimensions of these tanks do seem to have some depth to it. The little bed of fish jars you see normally are like 0.2 gallons of water at best. Additionally, each tank looks pristine. The water quality looks phenomenal. And from what I can see from the little pixelated bettas, they look extremely healthy and flamboyant. We got these classic scapes here and there looking like a Dutch aquascape. Some of them look almost Iwagumi. And then we got these avant-garde scapes that I've never even thought of before. This better rack is giving me just ideas of my next scape. Just two sticks mossed over. Incredible. And of course we got the tree scape. Just tanks that I've never seen to show off and sell their betta fish. And there's a lot of plants in this one that I probably don't even know of. They look very spectacular. I cannot ID those plants. They got some rare plants in here. There's probably CO2 hooked up. And just from a business point of view, because I did work at a lot of fish stores, there's a lot of bettas being shipped to these stores to be sold. And there's only, count them, three by three, nine tanks, which means nine betta fish. Any and every local fish store should have more than nine betta fish in stock at any given time because it's such a bestseller. That's where the money is at. So I wouldn't put it past them to have a more normal, more usual looking betta fish rack. And these nine very well scaped five out of five tanks might just be holding tanks for the more special bettas, like the $25 to $50 range. I don't know what I think about that, but I guess at least they're giving nine very lucky betta something really nice to live in. I can't say for sure though. There is a chance maybe every single betta fish tank in that store is like this. I highly doubt it. If I was a betting man, I love when shops treat bettas right. That's right. Yes, they don't really realize that this also helps their business. I won't be spending my money on a depressed betta with fin rot and ick in a cup. Nor will you be more inclined to support that kind of shop that keeps fish in that condition. Because you feel bad for spending money there. You just feel bad for supporting that behavior. But you feel good when you support a local fish store that does things so right, so beautifully. Very good husbandry. You feel like you're supporting their good husbandry efforts. And in turn, you're not just buying a product. You're you're helping the livestock feel better before it's being sold. For sure, it'll bring more customers as well as sell these nice little setups as well. Show a customer what's possible and they'll want to replicate the beauty. That's exactly it. You can make some small quick bucks here and there with a shoddy half-baked betta enclosure. Those cheap $10 setups that are like 0.5 gallons and little purple pink barf gravel. That's what, like another $5? But reel those customers in with the CO2 setup? Plants are really expensive. CO2, if not DIY, has to be repurchased. That's returning customer base. Every three months they're coming back in to restock on that CO2 canister, baby. And the light up top, the rimless glass, the substrate, the fertilizers, they have to keep buying as well. So if you make these beautiful higher tech setups and each customer is walking out with enough supply to make and recreate some of these beautifully scaped betta fish tanks, not only is it superb for the betta fish, but man, you're making so much more. I wish stores would make this a uh, sell as is and just take the water out and add the water back when you get home. Obviously not for big tanks, but nano tanks I think would be doable. I'd buy that in a heartbeat. From my knowledge, there are some local fish stores that actually do this exact thing for like the much smaller nano tanks, of course, because it's super hard to even do that for a 10 gallon. Now I have some PTSD sort of thing because I had to move a lot of fish tanks when I moved last time and that was, whew, I do not wish that upon my worst enemy. Hey guys, quick pause. I grew up with a fascination and love for fish. The thing is though, it seemed like no one around me even cares about aquarium fish. When I say tetra, they thought I said tetris. And if I asked you like fish, they'll be like, eh, I don't know, I like pork better. Ugh. But it's 2024. Wow, I feel so old just saying that. And we have something amazing called Discord. My channel and these fish tank review videos give you at least, I don't know, $2 worth of entertainment over the years. Please consider supporting what we do and all the processes that are going on through Patreon. You'll get perks in return, such as joining the FFT Discord, where you can chat with 2,000 plus fish keepers all around the world. I don't feel that lonely anymore trying to talk to someone about my hobby. You can also have a chance to submit to fish tank review yourself, and you get discount on my merch. 
much. Thank you for your consideration. Leon sent their 15 gallon planted tank featuring their bed of fish Yondo and five whole Amano shrimp in here. That's why it looks so clean and algae free. Beautiful work. Amano shrimp always number one in my shrimpy heart. I just have one question though. Are you sure it's 15 gallons? This maybe I misread, but this looks like, uh, this doesn't even look like five gallons. How, how could it be 15 gallons? I just don't get it. Something's playing tricks on my eyes. Maybe they meant 15 liters, whatever the case. There seems to be ample room for the bed of fish. The fish itself looks healthy, can't see the shrimp, and that's a good thing. They're in their shrimp dimension. That's how you know it's a good tank. 4.3 out of five, keep it up. Does this count? A tank so bad that it doesn't even exist. This is a white elephant gifting and someone just got a, a gift of a fish. Oh man. I hope it's not actually white elephant and that this was a targeted gift. Cause before we even assume too much, okay? Maybe, just maybe. These are a group of pro fish keepers. And this is a fish they wanted for a long time. And finally, they were gifted by their friend and can go into the perfect tank this person has been preparing this species of fish for. Very copium and hopium, because I think on that bag it says like Petco or PetSmart. And usually the customer base for Petco or PetSmart, uh, they're not like that. They are not him. Zuzu Punk Endler Enjoyer. Me too. Air fried. I featured their tank about a year ago. And this is their update. They added Black Phantom Tetras, a mono shrimp, and it's a very low tech and hands off tank and that's what I like to hear. I do slightly remember the Triceratops. It has all been mossed over or algae over which gives it an even nicer touch. Even though you added black phantoms I can hardly see any really. This is a very understocked tank and that's probably why it's hands off. It's giving Wallstead method. Got a pretty deep pretty substantial substrate bed. I love the pothos cuttings. I see you being uh, clipping and replanting the hygrophila polysperma everywhere. It's making your tank look bushier filling it out. 4.48 out of 5 keep it up. My sister's friend doesn't know why his fish are dying off so i offered to test his water for him all right let's see here this is our ph a little high for most fish it's not the do or die one i don't think let's keep moving so ammonia looks like zero looks really good now we get to nitrite oh floating around two to five yeah that's a solid 3.0 of nitrite ppm and then we get to the nitrate and of course it's rather very high as well around the 160 ppm mark so that is why your fish are dying the main reason is is the nitrite and your nitrate is pretty high even though it's not as poisonous 160 plus ppm is still a little extreme things that are living in your tank are gonna feel the effects a little bit but nothing compared to a 3.0 ppm of nitrite i mean that's not water in your tank anymore that's just murderous intent you know that horror movie coming out um that water has murderous intent for real this is csg and they're 55 gallon it's 1.5 months in i'm not sure what all the dead plants are it looks like straw in a fish tank i've never seen that sorry to say but your java fern looks good. You got some nice crypts growing, I think, or that might be Amazon sword. The elodia is reaching for the stars. You can clip that if you want, make it into more elodia. Make sure you're not planted into the substrate because that's how your elodia will rot. And of course, make sure your java fern is not planted in the substrate as well. I like that you do have nutrient rich substrate. There's some natural wood. The backdrop is, you know, it's natural backdrop. It's not the backdrop of the coral reef. The stocking, you got some angels. They're rather small for now, but hopefully they grow out for you. It's a pretty large tank at 55 gallons. It's not overstocked. There's mostly just a few species of tetra here and there. So size, husbandry should all be on point for now. The scape does need some work. A 3.9 out of 5, keep it up. Okay, so this very mysterious little thing that someone found in their fish tank and finally got into a little bull. It was one of the biggest mysteries by far on our aquariums. I scroll through the comment section and low key, I have never seen such a confused comment section on our aquariums. Usually the top comment within the first hour of a popular post, they already answered the question exactly what it is. But this really, really got everyone confused. A lot of people thought it was like a salamander larvae, but even for me, I knew that's way too fast to be a salamander larvae. So actually, despite the comment section mass confusion, they finally was able to kind to pinpoint what this was. It's apparently a sort of polychaete in their larval form. Polychaete is just this kind of worm. So it's not the adult worm, but it's more of their like, kind of like a free floating larval form. Kind of mildly rare to have this captured on film like this, because usually you just see the adult form of the worm. And a lot of people were thrown off by what looked like eyes. So this thing was looking around and that looked like too complex of an organism to be a worm or the larval stage of a worm but actually those were teeth so polychaetes are known to have pretty strong jaws they're not worms you can just bully around they do the bully and the larval stage is usually where they need to eat a lot and grow really fast so it's no surprise that these things move super fast and look like apex hunters when it comes to worms they're the wolves 
of the worm world. So when in the Bible, I think Paul was like, but I am a worm. I don't think he meant this kind of worm. I think he meant the more pathetic earthworms. They didn't know about this kind of worm in the Bible back then. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. The spawning mop is not a buffet. Oh, well, that is one smart loach. You know what I mean? This is perfect spawning grounds for all these beautiful cherry shrimp, but uh, also the perfect place to fatten up a coolie loach, it seems. Man, that loach is going to town on some shrimpy caviar. <laughs> Only the best of the best. Someone on Insta with a pet squid. That is just incredible. I really envy these people with a cephalopod because they're super intelligent. Some people think they're aliens. I think probably not. Nowadays it's too easy to think something is alien just because you can't explain it yet. I, I just think they had like a separate evolutionary path, you know? It's a shame they live only like two or three years, but I would love to have a relationship with a squid. Like, no, not, not like that. Just like owner, pet relationship because they're so intelligent you can really bond with them even though it's a short-lived bond actually i don't really think i like that because that's too short i'm gonna cry it's a psycho tank <laughs> This is actually a very cool skate. But you're saying, I can already hear it now, like, this is a very artificial tank. The plants aren't even real. It, it would be cooler if the plants were real, let me tell you that. But I think for me, if you're gonna go artificial, go at it 100%, make it into a theme. Don't just put like one or two things in there that are artificial and call it a day, because that's just half-assing it. If you're gonna go whole, go the whole ass. I think I would even appreciate like a Florida river basin where there's like litter in it. Not actually dirty, but like sterile litter. That's the theme of the tank. It's the Florida river basin. Same thing with this one. This is very bold. The centerpiece by far is the psycho and of course the joke here. Made a Cory Cat Christmas ornament. That is so cute. I didn't expect it to look so real and very chunky. This is a very nice ornament. How did you make that? Is that hand carved or something? You should go in a business. There are people who will buy this in a heartbeat. Like me, maybe. Depending on the price. I just don't feel like paying $35 for shipping, alright? I can't be the only one. We ought to be decorating our Christmas trees as a fish keeper should. Some sentimental fish keeping decor. Maybe put your aquarium co-op towel. <laughs> Sprinkle some easy green. Onion sent in their 20 gallon tank with some neon tetras and other tetras and one trumpet snail. Well, Onion, you're in for a crazy surprise in about a week or two. Actually, they said there's a whole bunch of baby snails already. This tank is getting an unofficial rating of 2.5 out of 5. I really like the plants and the wood. The stocking is not bad. It's a good size. I just can't handle the substrate. I'm sure husbandry's on point. Just the aesthetics for me. Just because you have a lid. <laughs> Even when there's a lid, are you kidding me? Toby has now prompted me to buy a lid for inside my lid. Lidception. And I'm thinking you're gonna need a lid for that one too. A lid within a lid within a lid. The word lid is starting to sound weird to me. Let's move on. I'm starting to feel like those parents that won't stop asking about grandkids. Come on, have sex already. Hey, when your shrimp are that blue, they gots to get it on, man. That's wasted potential. Same energy when people are like, yeah, we're trying for kids. Whenever I hear that in the wild, I just start imagining. <laughs> I just have a very vivid and active imagination. And I don't want to. Y'all are- stop saying we're trying for a kid. Will this homemade table comfortably carry this 3.5 gallon tank without issues? It's my first time building a table and I just want to make sure. This guy is 100% safe. That is like almost solid wood construction. That is not no Ikea furniture. That is robust. And a 3.5 gallon tank? The water is not heavy enough. You can still lift that bad boy full with just like a little football hold. Fish dies. The shrimp in the tank. Well, Thanksgiving came early. You know what I mean? Family member recently upgraded the fish tank to a bigger. I would hate to see the last tank. This is a bigger one. This is when you know exactly that there's no way this fish is living past a year. You try so hard to make them upgrade and this is the best they came up with. Never give up unless this happens. You're a big boy now. Big enough to be cooked and eaten instead of thrown back. Happy birthday. <laughs> Dang, that got dark really fast. Hey, welcome back to the end of this episode. Hope your money's going good, and I hope that fish tank review helped your money go even better. Before I let you guys go, here's this week's katwa. Do you guys eat fish? Like salmon, tilapia, stuff like that? Not like your bed of fish. All right, guys, that's not what we're doing here. Personally, I didn't like fish growing up, but now I do. And if you do like fish, what's your favorite type of fish to eat? Let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna cook up the best fish idea recipe you got. And if you enjoyed this episode, please smash that like button. There'll be more videos to come and don't forget to get your fish wet. Tetra, 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 we in a spot coming in hot. Ventral fin dot, acclimate that. With my shoal at, cure my fin rod from Carisiformis to Peratrodon. Hold on, there's not another fish that you can wish for. Live fam says, I finna one. I finna gone three days without fur. I'm an addict, like fanatic. I'm a baddest, no tabs, only dirt. My Cory gang so loyal, black Tetra go skirt. We came to play, came to silence, gang.